Some big numbers coming out of the housing market today, and they're not looking pretty if you're looking to buy or rent. It's all getting even more expensive. Home prices in the U.S. have climbed at a record pace during the pandemic. The median home price reached over $363,000 in June 2021, a 23.4 percent increase from 2020. Many of these houses are being sold above their asking price, often entirely in cash, with bidding wars becoming the new norm to weed out the competition. At the beginning of the pandemic, the Fed cut interest rates to zero and that dropped mortgage rates to historical lows. And as soon as people figured out how to buy a home in a safe manner with like social distancing, people came right back to the housing market. So you can see in just basically the last 15 months or so, we've seen a dramatic acceleration in home price growth to levels we haven't seen in decades. How hot is it? It's turning cold. Existing home sales falling in March, but at least in part because there just aren't enough homes to buy. While the market has cooled down considerably in June compared to its peak, fears of a housing bubble are becoming prevalent among many homeowners. I think it was sticker shock. I think a lot of people got in there and said, I just can't afford this. And that's why home sales came down. Almost every conversation that I've had over the past decade is, well, one, there's this fear that we might find ourselves in another crash and buyers don't want to be the ones holding the bag in the middle of that transition of a shifting market. If a housing bubble were to happen, it would mean that a very large portion of Americans' wealth are tied up in risky assets, and they could lose a lot of their wealth as soon as those home prices drop. So is America currently in another housing bubble? And what are the signs that can help investors predict an oncoming crash? A housing bubble occurs when strong demand and wild speculation drive up the price of residential real estate to the point of collapse. It's hard to like look at any one data indicator to know whether we're in a housing bubble or not. The signs that I would look for are actually more intangible, kind of a mindset that people start to adopt. If people go into buying a home thinking that they're gonna get this instant return. And you see a lot of speculators in the market bidding up prices, if you see a lot of people uh, or home buyers buying homes with no money down or very little money down, uh, those are some telltale signs. Um, if you see credit too easy, uh, then that's a, that can be a, a telltale sign as well. If a bubble is left unchecked, supply will continue to rise in order to meet the strong demand, and prices will climb beyond a reasonable amount. When demand suddenly and unexpectedly decreases, it leads to a sharp decline in housing prices, bursting the bubble. Housing bubbles eventually pop because people start to realize that what's going on isn't sustainable. As soon as people you know, see their neighbor selling their home and maybe their neighbor accepts a little bit less than what homes were worth when they bought, then they may start to get nervous and sell as well. And then it becomes like a cascade. Bubbles tend to burst pretty quickly um, so that's why, you know, one day you might have your home go down in value like 20 percent because the bubble burst. But sometimes the market requires a more drastic incident to crash on a national level. Catastrophic economic event. That's it. You need a catastrophic economic event to make a housing bubble pop. You can definitely have a pullback in the heat in the housing market. But to really have that market crash, there needs to be that event. There have been numerous housing bubbles throughout history, going back as early as 1837. Compared to other equity busts that occur on average every 13 years, it's far less frequent. However, the International Monetary Fund discovered that housing crashes usually last nearly twice as long with output losses that are nearly twice as large, leaving a much more detrimental impact on the economy. The 2008 financial crisis is a prime example of how a real estate bubble could potentially contribute to an economic meltdown. A lot of people got a first-hand experience in what it's like to see your home go down in value. Some people end up losing their homes if they weren't able to continue making their mortgage payments, and then they couldn't sell at a higher value than what they bought it for, so they would end up having to take a loss themselves or end up in foreclosure. So all of that can be very damaging to people, and I think it's very um, understandable that people are concerned about that happening again. Demand off the charts, prices rising at the fastest pace in 15 years. But is the market too hot? Is it overheating? A bubble, as they say. So is the recent real estate rush a sign of a housing bubble? 
According to most experts, the market is shaping up to look more like a boom rather than a bubble. I don't expect that we're going to see a um, uh, house price crash. I don't think we're in a bubble. We say bubble because we can't believe how much prices have gone up. But really, a bubble tends to be something that's inflated that could burst at any minute and change. And that's not really the case here. While speculation certainly is a factor, the main cause for today's demand is in the low mortgage rates. At the start of the pandemic in March 2020, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage sat at 3.45%. In July 2021, that number had dropped to 2.87%. We've got 30-year fixed-rate mortgage rates for much of the last several months below 3%. That's a phenomenal rate. It's rock bottom. It's a record low. I don't see them going any lower. But that is one of the reasons why that has led to this pickup in demand to buy homes and has added the uh, fuel uh, necessary to push home prices up. Supply is also an issue. According to the National Association of Realtors, the U.S. has underbuilt its housing needs by at least 5.5 million units over the past 20 years. That's a stark comparison to the previous housing bubble in 2008, when overbuilding was the issue. In my town, which is Marblehead, Massachusetts, as of this morning, we had 17 single-family homes on the market. 17. So, and some of, and that's not even considered bad. Um, some of the surrounding towns, the town next door, they have five single family homes. So we've got really the demand and supply forces coming together. We've got a boost in demand that's fueled by record low mortgage rates. And we've got a shrinkage of supply as many of the older homeowners decided to postpone listing their home for sale and wait until a later date when the pandemic was in the history books. So between more demand, less supply, prices are up. And they're up at the fastest pace since the 1970s. There also haven't been any signs of a lending bubble, which is often associated with housing busts. Most of the new mortgages today are fixed rate compared to the riskier adjustable rate mortgages in the past. Subprime loans are those loans made to borrowers or to applicants who have very, very low credit scores. Those are gone from the marketplace. What's also gone are the liar loans. Just about all of the mortgages today are fully documented. Documenting income, documenting employment, documenting financial assets so that both the borrower and the lender have some um, assurance that the um, borrower has the financial capability to manage that mortgage loan over time. Furthermore, rapidly rising home prices saw a correction in June 2021 after sales of newly built homes dropped to the lowest level since the early days of the pandemic in April 2020. I think it was sticker shock. I think a lot of people got in there and said, I just can't afford this. And that's why home sales came down. We did see some more supply come onto the market and that's helpful. And that's a lot of sellers saying, well, if this is the height of the market, I wanna get in now. Um, but again, they're not gonna get that top dollar if people can't afford it. So I think we're at kind of a turning point as in the housing market is cooling down on sales, but prices may stay elevated if we don't get enough supply in there to meet the current demand, which does still exist. The U.S. might be safe from a housing bubble at the moment, but that doesn't mean another crash will never happen again. But there are certain indicators that could signal danger on the horizon. It would be unusual where you should fear about home prices really starting to plummet is if you look around and you see all this new construction in your neighborhood and yet home prices aren't moderating at all, despite there being all this added inventory. If you see a whole lot of flips, a lot of investors coming in, you know, doing modest improvements to the home and then getting a whole lot more than they put in when they end up selling, that would be a sign that um, the housing market is starting to look a little bit unhealthy. While the thought of another crash is certainly scary, experts say that a real estate crash similar to the one during the 2008 financial crisis is unlikely to occur again. The market today is not in danger of a housing bubble bursting because everyone out there who owns a home has a mortgage that was underwritten responsibly. Some of those changes were due to the Dodd-Frank Act, which also then created the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. 
and through some of the regulations that have been promulgated, that has really assured that mortgages are underwritten in a prudent fashion and provide for mortgages that um, can uh, lead to sustainable home ownership for the home buyer over time. But for both current and potential homeowners that remain worried, there are certain measures that can be taken to lessen the risk. If you're a home buyer today and you're concerned that prices are overheating and you're buying at the top of the market, the most important thing you should do is not overpay for your house. If you feel the price is higher than what you're comfortable with, higher than what you think the true economic value of the home is, then step back from it. Um, you don't need to buy now. The mindset that I would encourage homeowners to have is a very long-term mindset. Like, it doesn't really matter if home values go down for a couple of years if you're gonna hold and not sell for a decade. So I would just, you know, keep your eye on the long-term goals, make sure that you have enough savings that you could keep paying your mortgage payment, even if you lost a job, even if you lost some income, so you can ride out any temporary dip in the housing market.